What's good? We spent the last few days in Ghana, you know, with the whole family, my boys, my wife, just chilling, relaxing, you know, and my wife, um, she organised a visit to the African Science Academy, which is a school for some of the most talented females who are studying STEM subjects all across Africa. So just talk to the young ladies, you know, impart some knowledge, hear what they have to say, and hopefully share our story, you know. It means a lot to be able to share my voice or contribute to another part of the globe, especially a part which I have such an affinity towards and hopefully it's well received but you know it's just another day and there's, there's my mum over there. It's not a picture, it's a, it's a video. It, it's okay, let me... It's a tough question because innately you will know when you have to start again. You know, I think Thomas Edison has a famous quote, even though he's a crook notoriously, but they said to him that, you know, it took you a hundred attempts to make the light bulb. And he goes, no, I just found 99 ways not to make a light bulb. Do you see what I'm saying? So sometimes you start where you are because there's always a lesson in what you did wrong, do you understand? And one thing Linda mentioned that I think is really important is the idea of transferable skills. So although you may not have excelled where you started, you've learned skills that may be transferable to another space that you're in or another industry, you know? And I feel like as long as you keep on developing those skills, you never know when they're gonna be applicable. So sometimes you fail here and you're like, you know what? This is the failure, you know, um, let me let me go to another industry, but you've still learned from that experience. And I'll tell you what, I know a lot of entrepreneurs, I know a lot of successful entrepreneurs, and one thing that you don't see about in the news or on social media is the business that you know them for is very rarely their first business. A lot of people have failed in many of their ventures and it's come into another venture. I'm, I'm reading a book about a guy called James Dyson and he invented the vacuum cleaner. And he started out trying to make lots of different things before he got to the vacuum cleaner. But what he learned in that process led him to where he is, you know. So I think you're never really starting again. You're just starting from where you ended or where you stopped, you know. One thing about failure is that we feel like we have to get back up straight away. Sometimes it may take you a day, sometimes it may take you a year, sometimes it may take you five years, you know what I mean? And I think that's the most important thing about failure. It's not about when you get back from it, but it's about the fact that you get back from it. There's so much pressure to be like, everyone's watching you to say you failed. You might not be able to tomorrow or the day afterwards, but I think it's so important to have in mind that I'm going to revisit this and I'm going to try again, but you have to find your own individual time. For me, I. It goes back to what I said to the um, lady here. I had a lot of people around me. Like I said, I had my wife around me. I, you know, I had people that believed in me. So even when I didn't believe in myself, those were people that allowed me to spur me on. So I think it's so important to surround yourself with the right people who encourage that within you, you know what I mean? I'm really inspired by how you're able to speak to us today. I have a problem with anxiety. Yeah. Whenever I have to speak in front of people, I feel very anxious and sometimes I'm unable to express myself. So what's the advice you can give me on how to control this? Um, I think the more, more broad advice is generally practice. Put yourself in as many different situations as possible, you know what I mean? Like if you can speak at like a church or a youth group or something like that, practice. On a very like specific thing, you always have to make yourself comfortable on the stage. And what I used to do is, you find something that's very normal. So what I used to do before I used to go on stage is, I used to untie my shoelaces, and then when I get on stage, I would tie them up in front of everybody. And although if you watch all my old videos, you can see me doing it. Although it's something very simple, it's something that makes me feel comfortable, and it's something I can only do when I'm comfortable, do you understand? So why in the process of doing that on stage, it always set me into a fit spirit of like, this is just a normal setting and this is something that I can do. So I always say find something very practical that you could do that kind of triggers that. You know, my son is very nervous in front of people <laughs> and I'm trying to teach him to take deep breaths, you know, like count to ten. Things that make you be in charge of your environment. You shouldn't let the environment control you. And I think a simple thing for me was always just tying my shoelaces and everybody would wait and watch you. But it allowed me to realise this is my space, I'm in control of it and I can treat it in a way that makes me comfortable. And you ask how long will I love you? And I ask you, what kind of stupid question is that? 
Does love expire? Does love retire? Does love fall sick and wither away? Does love go away for two weeks on holiday pay? True love doesn't always look the same. It transforms, it adapts, it changes according to the seasons and circumstances. It might get tired, it might need to endure, and at times love may lack patience, but hopefully it never lacks commitment. It might be complicated, it might get conflicted, or even confused. But my love will always be there. How long will I love you? How long is a piece of string? It all depends on what type of string you're holding. And hopefully my heart holds the kind of love that is timeless.